Okay, student, we're going to talk about autonomous databases and let's go back to what we've learned so far. So we've talked about DB systems, Exadata DB systems. We've uh, gone into details with the earlier videos. Bare metal and virtual machines, we've worked with both of them. And autonomous databases, this was introduced in 2018, which is actually, according to many experts, it's groundbreaking. It's the best thing ever happened to databases. So autonomous uh, will go more into the features and what it can do. But it's split into two flavors. One is uh, transaction processing, uh, like a, a regular database. And uh, second one is data warehouse, which you could use for BI or reporting. So this is what we are going to concentrate. This is October 2018, and I am going to update the training with this autonomous databases. So I was trying to find out what it actually means. What's the definition of autonomous? This is one of the closest I could find for a uh, database, which actually means existing or capable of existing independently. So what I gather is one of the system which does not require an external intervention. So it does it by itself on its own. That's what I gather. So fully autonomous databases. Let's look through their features and how they can help. Supports all standard SQL and business intelligence tools and provides all of the performance of market leading Oracle database in an environment that is tuned and optimized for autonomous database performance of the market leading oracle database as i mentioned this is built upon oracle database so autonomous database is built on oracle database it actually is not part of the oracle database but you require additional licensing which you're going to pay for that feature scales elastically fast query performance no database administration so with autonomous database it provides an easy to use fully autonomous database that scales elastically, delivers fast query performance and requires no database administration. As a service, autonomous database not require database administration. With autonomous database, you do not need to configure or manage any hardware or install any software. Handles creating the database. So autonomous database handles creating the database, backing up the database, patching the database, and upgrading the database, and growing and shrinking the database as the demand. Now this is all done independently without any external intervention. Autonomous transaction processing. Supports all tools, autonomous transaction processing. So the database supports all tools and applications that support Oracle database because it's built upon Oracle database. These tools and applications connect to the autonomous transaction. Uh, this sentence doesn't do much because it support, then it, it is going to connect. Let's move on. So it uses the standard SQL net connection, which you can use with a standard Oracle database. So Oracle Cloud Services are pre-configured for autonomous transaction processes. So Oracle Analytics Cloud and other cloud services are pre-configured for autonomous transaction processing. Autonomous transaction processing is completely elastic service. So what it means is when we say elastic service, it can actually scale out or scale in as the demand. The best part is it does not require a downtime. That is very important in today's uh, IT provided services. So you can use a cloud-based service console for managing the service for tasks like creating or scaling the service and monitoring the service also. So you can monitor the service through the console. For tasks such as viewing the, the recent levels of activity in the database, also it gives you a picture into what the current activity is on that database. It also provides a notebook application which provides simple querying, data visualization, and collaboration capabilities. So that comes with the autonomous transaction database. That's part of the bundle. Let's look through the architecture. So what we are seeing is an autonomous transaction processing and their components. So including there is a center box. 
so when I say the center box, it's it's this part here. Now the center box with the ser service management services which is the console we talked about we are going to use to monitor and manage and then there's another section of built-in access tools for machine learning now both of this connect to the transaction processing database so the data is actually stored here this is you can use the service so you can use the service console you can use the machine learning and uh, process the data around here and store it to the transaction processing database this connects to a developer tools sql developer so you can use a sql developer to connect to those services you can also use third party applications so you could have a third party applications which are in the cloud so you could be subscribing to that applications or it could be on prem where you own those applications and they could connect to the same service management console and machine learning so there is also a connection from the autonomous transaction processing to object oracle object storage cloud you can use the object storage cloud which are which holds your data files so you can combine so you can use the third party applications to connect to both so this way you could be loading data which are on the object storage cloud to your database here so let's go on to the key features so the key features managed oracle simplifies end-to-end -end management of the database so what it means it means provisioning of new database growing or shrinking storage and compute resources patching and upgrade believe me this is a difficult thing to accomplish if there is a database which can do that patching and upgrade believe me it, it takes away all the pressure you have to because when you're trying to patch you are trying to work with your active applications and you are trying to move them around to vacant that server to patch it and it's a whole lot of pain and backup and recovery that's even important there is no chance of user error it's done by the system it is going to be backed up and you can recover fully elastic scaling so size the autonomous transaction processing to the exact computed storage required as per your demand scale the autonomous transaction processing on demand independently scale compute or storage and the best part is in down the road if you don't use it you can shut it off and it's done automatically it scales automatically if you're not using it it's going to sh shut that compute instance down so you don't pay for it. so what does autonomous transaction processing support it supports existing applications so if you were to move from a standard oracle database into an autonomous database it's going to support everything which you've been supporting all this time you can connect via SQL net JDBC ODBC like the uh, regular database you can do a third-party data integration tool like the regular database Oracle cloud services analytical cloud services golden gate cloud service integration cloud service all of those are high performance queries and concurrent workloads so it is optimized so the database actually is optimized to to perform with complicated queries and concurrent workloads which run in parallel Oracle SQL so autonomous transaction processing is compatible with existing applications so if you have an application which already interacts with an Oracle database then you don't need to worry it's going to do the same with autonomous transaction processing database built-in web-based data analysis tool so web-based notebook tool for designing sharing SQL based data driven interactive document this is important database migration utility it easily migrates from mysql post gravy sql sql server and other database it's not limited to oracle alone simple cloud based data loading so you can actually load data from amazon to from azure or you can do it from your on-prem uh, storage or from the cloud 
object storage. So it gives you many options to load data. So it's very versatile and can be work used with any of the other cloud providers. SQL Developer Autonomous Transaction Processing Support. Connect to the transaction processing. You can create tables, indexes, materialized views in autonomous transaction processing. You can load data into this databases. You can copy tables to this autonomous database. You can transfer a schema, which is basically the user and the data into one of those uh, autonomous databases. Business intelligence tool support. It's compatible with Oracle Anal Analytic Cloud and also with third party business intelligence tools. So that is very important. So it's not limited to Oracle alone. So look at the typical workflow for using an autonomous transaction processing. So first you're going to create and log into your cloud account, which is very simple. We've done that uh, in other videos. You're going to provision an autonomous transaction processing, which we are going to do a walkthrough, a lab, which is very simple. You're going to start that database you just provisioned. Again, you can use the console and it's as good as clicking to start. It requires some thinking where you're going to create a database user and obtain security credentials. So you really need to plan this. What type of users you're going to add, what roles you're going to add, and what are the security credential? Because this is something if you do it once and you use it often. So, so make sure you do this right. Connect to your database using SQL Developer. So you can download the SQL Developer or another database client tool, obtain security credentials, and connect to your, your database. So you can manage that database. You can also use a database. You can connect to the database using a database client. Scale the database. You can use the service console to scale an instance. So basically, if you see, for some reason, if you're seeing there is a conflict or there is a high demand for CPU, you can go to your console and just add that CPU if needed. Load the data into the database. This is very important. Use the available tools to load the data into database. We are going to go more into de detail about that. Again, you can use the console to check on the health of the database. And finally, you're going to use the console to manage the database. 